What's up, YouTube? Capital G here, DN Duel Commentary. We got my good friend Nesh at the top 1699 and Zyler, uh 1613. Looks like Nesh opened up with Tanky. I don't know what he searched for. He set Ice Hand. Um, Zyler summoned Gearge Accelerator. He went mind control. He tried to make what I would have made too, Ragna Zero, and it got bottomless. So that basically brings us up to where we are. Uh, Zalar sets four in the end phase and uh, one gets MST. So I'm just going to guess that he got Bayer from Tinky. And this is sort of, I mean, as crazy as it sounds, this is just a complete throwback match. It looks like um, Nesh plays Gayaku on the card close to the deck. Zalar doesn't respond. So, I mean, I think if Bear gets it in, he's going to be a very, very happy Nesh. Looks like he's going to try and attack with Bear. That's 1800. And you almost wonder if he would use one of his little chump blockers, um, aka Girgi. Yep, yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, would he potentially try and use that to stop his opponent from getting its effect off? And I don't really fault him on that. Uh, granted, he will lose both monsters. Assuming that, well, one goes down in battle. Assuming that Nash can pop one. Maybe he has breakthrough skill, maybe he doesn't. Well, no, if he had breakthrough skill, he'd just use that on Bear to begin with. So Nash says, all right, well, I'll take the quick plus. And Zeller top decks the good lord, what a top deck. That was an incredible top deck. Um, so I would imagine he's going to go for Silver Mountain, which would get him Gearge Accelerator back. And this kind of seems like you don't even like you really don't even have to think this over. You just get Silver Mountain and then Silver Mountain uh, attacks Bear and that's exactly what he's doing. Silver Mountain's gonna attack Bear. It's gonna take one hundred. It's gonna get him Girgia Accelerator and Defense Mode for free. And now play goes back to Nesh. And Nesh is in dire need of a Tinky. Either that or Wolfbur. Oh, never mind. He has Wolfbur. And we've already established that uh, Zaylar doesn't have any, um, well, he may have a black horn or something like that. Uh, he doesn't have bottomless, otherwise he'd already burnt it on the bear. And he doesn't have any effect negation, otherwise he'd have burnt that on bear too. I think Nesh is going to go for King Tiger, and I think he's going to get Tinky, and I think he's going to get Tinky, and um, I think he's going to search bear off of the Tinky. That makes the most sense to me. Unless, unless maybe... I don't know. Um, if not Bear, then like maybe Rooster, because Rooster just like makes a ton of advantage too. But I think that this is just this looks like straight four axes. It doesn't seem like three point five so far. I mean, with with uh, to you know try and go like Spirit and all of that. I haven't seen any of those cards. I mean, we haven't even seen Leo yet. So right now it just looks like straight four axes. Now again, I think you have to look at all exceeds being equal here. You look at your opponent's back row, right? And you're basically facing down one card. Now you think, okay, what if it's bottomless? Well, it can't be bottomless because he would have used bottomless on the bear. So you're trying to think. The only card that that, that I could see this being is Blackhorn of Heaven, like literally. Blackhorn of Heaven is pretty much the only card I could think of. Either that or Wiretap. Because what else would Girgi have not used that with? I mean, you used an effect that they obviously wanted to stop. Uh, you attacked, which it couldn't stop that. You know, um, you summoned the big monster, it couldn't stop that. Like, you look at all the actions that you've done, and your opponent hasn't responded. Thus, it seems like they don't have a they don't have an answer for that. So, I think this is probably wiretap. So, you see that um, the tanky comes down off of the tiger king. Tiger king activates the effect. Why do you attack? Okay, well, I guess it's because he doesn't have any targets in his graveyard. I guess he feels like I might as well just get rid of the accelerator. Um, Silver Mountain can't do anything. Uh, he does get the add, but don't you have to get a level four? Oh, my bad. Target one Gergia monster. Huh, my bad. It's any Gergia not named Gergia Accelerator. So I guess he's going to go for MK2. I thought he was going to attack. I thought he was going to attack Silver Mountain. So anyways, main phase 2. Nash is probably just going to pass. I wonder still why Nash did that. Maybe he has a hand trap in hand like a Valor 
or a maxi and he just wanted to get rid of that you know now granted if Nesh does have like let's say he has like spirit in hand obviously he can go um, like let's say he loses this let's say that Zalar goes for um, Zen mains right and he crashes and he kills Tiger King okay well then you can what's it called if he had spirit in hand obviously he could go Leo Leo get Tenten and then summon spirit and just I mean that's pretty much that I think that's pretty much a wrap after that point you make so much advantage with Rooster Rooster adds bear and then you can use Tinky again so it looks like he uses dark hole which all things being considered I guess is kind of like a bonus because um, he didn't get any use out of that Silver Mountain, and it's not like the Tiger King wasn't going to die anyway. So if I'm Nash, I'm pretty happy about that. Now you see that um, Zalar just attacks. You know, you oh, well, no. I'm, I'm thinking you almost wonder if maybe he should have used Dark Hole after Zemangs was on board, considering he'd have been able to pop Goyoku. I think I would have done that. Just to get rid of Goyoku, because this could be a surprisingly good card. This could be like a torrential tribute or something that you need to stop your opponent from going off. So it looks like Nesh just said, I'm going to go for Tinky. Um, okay, well, obviously he didn't have the spirit. He'll probably just pass turn. You don't really want to give your opponent anything to attack into, thus popping Goyoku. And Girgia as a deck is not, Girgia is not going to top that one monster and do 7400. It's just not going to happen. Um, not all for one monster. Now, if he had like, okay, well, never mind. Looks like Nesh is going to be reducing his life points a little bit. He can't attack, but he goes King Tiger, Wolfbark. Wolfbark gets him another monster for free. Bear, Ice Hand. I wouldn't be surprised if he used Leo too. Okay, so he goes to the full jugular. He goes 4K. Um. You know what? I guess this could have been Needle Sibling too. I, I never thought about that, honestly. So he's going to go for a rank 4. He goes Black Ship of Corn. Safe bet. Looks like Zeme is going to die. Okay, well, Zalar says no honest. He just scoops. And that's good. That was game 1. So we get to see the full duel here. Um, a match that was... It used to be really in Fire Fist's favor because they basically had the instant counter to Girgia armor being set that was fire fist bear especially when you consider that as much as Girgia likes to set traps I mean fire fist would just be like okay Goyoku Goyoku MST MST like it was almost like you couldn't afford to have any bad reactive traps like you know what I mean like even with fire even the way that Girgia's trap lineup now is it's even it's even less like it's even less effective against fire fist turn one like if you go armor right you set armor and then you set you know you wall up and a lot of times now you know you get shit like wiretap okay that's not going to do anything to stop bear you know trap tricks chapel nightmare that does nothing to stop bear um i just had it in my head black horn of heaven like none of those cards stop a bear pop you know what i mean it's like breakthrough skill or bust so now it's like you know Girgia has they've adapted to fight the meta and you can't blame them for that but since fire fist isn't the meta the, a lot of cards that they play are not very good against fire fist breakthrough skill fiendish chain stuff like that is really good against them nobody really plays fiendish chain anymore although i've seen a couple of gear Gia players play it all right so this is a match where nesh doesn't have to side a lot i would say black horns uh i think Fire Fist pretty much 50-50 on if they run Dark Hole or not. Okay, we see a Dimensional Fissure, which I don't really think hurts Fire Fist that much. I mean, he could just, like, normal summon Bear and attack and be, like, feeling really good. <laughs> okay, we see a Tinky. And Nesh is asking if... He's asking Zalor if it's okay. Zalor says it's good. And... I mean, okay, you gotta look at it like this. Yeah, Dimensional Fissure cuts off the whole spirit, you know, like, it cuts off the spirit bullshit, but it really doesn't stop, doesn't stop, like, Bear and Gorilla. Like, it doesn't stop the main two guys from doing what they want to do. Now, Macrocosmos is a little different, but just in general, doesn't stop them. And even in, even Macrocosmos wouldn't stop them from being able to use their, uh, 
it wouldn't stop them from being able to use their um, their battle damage effects. So you see that um, Zeller activates uh, Phoenix Chain to stop Nesh from blowing up cards on his field. If I'm if I'm Nesh, I'm feeling good right now because even though and I kind of I expected a gear to your gear, but even with that, you still you're still technically plus two. <laughs> Like, this is not going to do anything right now. And this is a neg one also. So, while Gear, Gia, um, Gear Giant X may, you know, plus out the ass, you're still not in that bad of shape. Now, if you have something like a Bottomless or a Black Horn of Heaven, then you're sitting really pretty. You, you obviously have a lot of good cards. Or you have, I mean, you're in a position to where Zalar is going to have to do a lot to fight back. You see Upstart and then Mind Control. It's odd that he would use mind control. I mean, you think that you're gonna go for Gear Giant X, but okay, I guess he's thinking something different. Maybe he'll go 101. I mean, just in general, I'm, I'm thinking you're kind of cutting off your access to Gear Giant X to take a monster that I'm not sure Nesh even wanted anymore because it had Phoenix Chain on it. So it was like, I don't think that Nesh was just gonna summon a level four and be like, "Hi, ah, Raw XC." Because you had so many back rows, so you mean you go into honor arc, which is great, but it's not like it's not the most threatening card in the world, you know. So Nesh attacks, or excuse me, Zalar attacks right in the D prison. So honor arc is dead unless he wiretaps it, I guess. Nope, he says, okay, you take it. And now all you have is this little shitty, shitty Girgiana. Like I think I would have just went for Gear Giant X and tried to make the advantage getting a Girgia uh, armor as kind of like the fallback uh, plan. So anyways, it looks like Nash just summons and attacks. And if he gets rid of Girgiano, I mean, what does Zaller have to show for all of the cards he played? I mean, he's played Mind Control, Dimensional Fissure, Fiendish, he's gotten nothing out of any of the cards that he's played. And even from the beginning, when he used Fiendish Chain on the Gorilla, I thought that was a win for Nash. Because, I mean, after you've used, uh, you've attempted to use Gorilla's Effect, I mean, the Fiendish Chain essentially pays for it. But when he mind controlled it, it was like, shh. Ness was probably thinking, thank God. Like, it's not like I'm going to use this Gorilla anytime soon. And I think right now, all Ness is going to do is just keep attacking. I think if he lands a successful attack, um, well, I thought he was going to go for, uh, I thought he was going to go for Goyoku before he had this. Now, I'm not so, well, obviously you go for Tenki first, and then you launch Tenki for Goyoku with Rooster. That makes the most sense. But even if he didn't have Rooster, I don't think he goes for Goyoku because your opponent may have three back row, but they're not doing anything with their back row. So obviously they're not really that important. I mean, yeah, that leads me to think, okay, you probably, you have super reactive cards. You have cards like Trap Tricks Nightmare and Blackhorn, the cards that I was talking about that aren't good against Fire Fist. Wiretap. You don't have attack stoppers. You don't have summon stoppers. Otherwise, you'd have already used them. So these have to be anti XC cards. I mean, or anti special summon. I, I kind of consider Trap Hole Nightmare an anti XC card, just as I do Black Horn of Heaven. Like I don't consider. I mean, it's kind of a anti special summon type deal. But I think these are anti XC stopping cards. And I think that there's at least one wiretap here. And I don't think wiretap's going to get used at all. Unless he just, well, if he exercises the field, then obviously that just resets everything. So anyways, Nesh targets this card right here, which is second from the deck. So he puts two counters on it and sets another card in his back row. Right now, Zaller looks like he's extra fucked. Um, not only does Nesh have, what, 3,300 on board. Okay, Zaller just scoops it up. I mean... The I, I'm not really sure. Yeah, he had black horns. I, I knew he had some type of reactive cards because he just wasn't using them. I'm not sure about the dimensional fissure from the get go. Um, I look at that card and I'm like, okay, I guess it stops the hands and it stops spirit, but it, in general, does it stop gorilla and bear? I mean, that's pretty much where the deck is built from. So if you can't stop the, the two most basic fire fists that your opponent is going to want to use, you're not really doing anything. Um, so. I think that Overworked is a card that nobody runs anymore, but it's still pretty good because it's good against Fire Fist, it's good against the Random Insectors, Bujin, stuff like that. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you for watching as always.